Well, hey, hey, everyone. We're back again for another uh, another round of Harley Quinn's Mad Love. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do a couple a couple things <coughs> uh, today because I, I I had a, a few um, a few content ideas uh, um, that are outside of the parameters of uh, of of reading the book. Um, I might save that for between chapters or after. Uh, but I, I, James is feeling a little under the weather, so what we were doing for this Sunday's video, um, is being postponed a bit. I, for those of you who were here, uh, last time when I was talking about our schedule, that was gonna be the, uh, the Batman Adventures Volume 2, uh, what would have happened had the story continued video. Um, but unfortunately, James is a little under the weather, so that's being pushed. Uh, we had come up with an idea for a really quick, um, a really quick video to do instead. Uh, but I think that might be saved for later as well. But it does involve doing, uh, doing it on Twitch, um, doing something on Twitch. Uh, uh, so y'all might be a part of that just so we have it, uh, um, have it stored away. Uh, if you guys noticed on the, uh, on the, 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 the new schedule uh, graphic for this week. Um, I'll also start doing uh, streams on Saturday evenings. Uh, those are hopefully going to be a little bit more uh, loosey goosey, a little 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 relaxed, little uh, little little bit of this, little bit of that. Uh, this week it's going to be doing uh, timeline stuff, uh, kind of taking what we've put together in our videos and making a, a just a timeline graph I, I guess uh, you can say uh, but other weeks it'll be something along the Good lines job. of like doing magazines uh, reading reading magazine articles stuff like that and we're talking about perhaps uh, clipping those um, for uh, use on the channel um, so hopefully uh, Hopefully that'll end up working out. I might do I'm, I might do a magazine today after the uh, after the book uh, because I got this this wizard JLA special from 1998 uh, that has some uh, Justice League ideas that were going to be used for Superman the animated series and weren't. I, I've posted the, the the article itself on our social media already. Uh, but in case you haven't seen it, we'll, we, we might read along with that today just to like kind of have um, one of those clips, I guess, ready for James to use um, should things be backed up a little bit more uh, because of him being sick. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the plan today. We're gonna do we're gonna do the next two chapters of, of Mad Love. We're gonna do a little quick uh, uh, haha video thing. Uh, and then we might, we might, uh, depending on how things feel, we might end up reading an article from Wizard. Uh, let me catch up with the chat real quick before I hop in. Uh, if you weren't here last week, I'm trying to be more active with the chat. It's kind of difficult to do when I'm going back and forth between a book, scrolling a PDF, and looking at the chat on my phone, but I'm trying to be... I'm trying to be better at it. I, I, I wanna, I wanna be there to chit chat with you all, so... Let's uh let's 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 see what we what we've got going on, and then we'll hop into the book. Uh, Watchtower Database is here. Uh, it's three o'clock on the on their end. So you must you must live on the east coast. Uh, Sp Spider Cord Streams is here. Howdy howdy. Up oh, did uh did the music just cut out? It was about the oh, what the heck? Kathy's weight loss battle. I don't want to know about Kathy's weight loss battle. Why did uh? Why did it go from being the music to being that? There we go. Back to the music. There we go. Forget about Kathy. I'm dealing with a weight loss battle as well. Um, oh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, Conspiracy Buff is here. Uh, Ap Apless Opinions is here. Nice to nice to have y'all all join us. Um, ba, 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 ba. Twitch is the bed. How you doing, WDB? I'm doing excellent. I'm doing better better than James is doing right now. Uh, and I assume that Ted is doing decently, too. Uh, best wishes to James. He's uh, he's going to need them. 
weekend streams are a very good idea. I'm 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 hoping so. Like I know I know that some of us are in uh different time zones and stuff, so I'm hoping that like the the doing it at six o'clock my time isn't like a huge hindrance uh to y'all. But I uh you know. Well, you work Saturday and close. You said that you're three hours ahead of me. So that would be like nine o'clock your time. Uh, and uh, these aren't going to be hour long streams. They're gonna be a little bit more loosey goosey, just a little bit more uh, whatever I end up feeling that day. So it could be like three hours, it could be 20 minutes. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, hey, thank you for the uh, for the bits, uh, uh, Captain America, <laughs> not canon. So far, that's the way this book is looking. Uh, did I see the new BTAC is out? Yes, yes. Um, Ted and I both read that this morning. Um, and I think I think there's another issue coming out tonight. From what I understand, this uh, this one is split into three digital issues. And I want to say the one was out last night. The next will be out tonight. And I think they said the last one will be out on the 31st. Uh, I think we're going to be saving this one until all three digital issues are out. Um, we were kind of planning for that already, but we thought they were all going to come at the same time. Uh, so it's a bummer that we have a little bit more of a wait time, but we've got other stuff in production uh, that's already getting pushed back uh, as it is. So, you know, we, we're just we're just dealing with what we got. Um, it's appreciated, Maddie, but we all understand, man, still. And I do. I'm in East Tennessee. Gotcha. OK. Uh, we're here for Kathy. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy who? Kathy who? Who is... Am I, am I missing, am I missing a meme? Uh, I'll close my store at 1030, but I'm hoping I'll catch you at some point. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, it's not necessarily just gonna be an hour-long thing. Um, so, you know, I might still be on at that time. But let me go ahead, let me pop the window, the chat window open on my phone. That way I've got that going. Oh, weight loss, Kathy. How did I blank on that so quickly? <laughs> That's all right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's hop into the chapter. Uh, for those of you who don't normally hang out with us, I don't, I don't know if there's any of y'all uh, that that applies to, uh, but if there is, usually we go through the chapter and then take notes uh, on like canonicity and like character appearances and stuff like that. Uh, afterwards, sometimes we'll stop. Um, and like where there's page page breaks in the chapter, uh, uh, just so I don't lose anything. It all depends on how big the chapter is and how they format it and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, so we'll be reading chapters 17 and 18. Um, for, and if you haven't been here uh, throughout this book so far, um, essentially we dealt with Harley's childhood, uh, um, her going to college, and she's been working at Arkham for a couple of months now, and she's started to um, to to give, I guess, therapy to the Joker. Um, basically, it's pretty pretty much like the Mad Love, um, the Mad Love, uh, 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 you know, cartoon and comic. Uh, but there's a lot more there's a lot more oomph to it. Um, they they kind of went around. Uh, like the situation of um, Harley sleeping with her professors for grades uh, and had actually decided no she's she's smart here um, she worked for her grades so that was a lot of fun um, they they added in the pot the potential of her being like a, a child trafficked <laughs> as a kid uh, not quite as fun as, as her actually being smart now uh, but, you know, they, they, they're saying this isn't just a kid's book. This is an adult's book. Um, and then we, we got, you know, like a lot of extra stuff in her time in Arkham. She was running a, a therapy group uh, for, the, um, for the, 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 the female rogues. Uh, we had um, Magpie, Baby Doll, March Harriet, Poison Ivy all in it. Uh, so there's been a lot, of, a lot of fun cameos and stuff. Um, Oh, Andrew Kazini's here. That's the one. It seemed funny to me in the moment. Oh. Oh. Andrew Kazini's been here. He was the one who brought Kathy up. Got it. Got it. Got it. I didn't see Big Mac. 
slide in. Howdy, howdy, Mac. Uh, Keanu Comics is here as well. Had to swing by while editing. Looks like I'm right on time. Well, hey, nice to have you here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Keanu is a uh, is another YouTuber. Very small channel. Uh, I think last I looked only had like 48 subs. And uh, you know what? Could use a couple more. So let me uh, let me open up actually a, a YouTube um, that's not my music, uh, so I can grab his link and drop it in the uh, drop it in the thing. Um, he's going to be on our uh, on our Batman Adventures Volume Two um, video that I was just saying has been postponed, but they are going to be on it, and hopefully we're going to you know funnel some new subscribers their way. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the the link open, uh, but it's going kind of slow. I bet you Keanu might actually have the link faster than me because uh, my computer is is a is a slow bee. If you wanna if you wanna drop your 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 link, uh, Keanu, I won't stop you. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get it. If you get it before I do, then then it was all a lost cause on my end. Yeah, my computer's going terribly slow. Uh, let's see. I gotta get back to work, unfortunately, but Spencer's won't wait. Damn, well, it was nice for you to be here for a little bit, uh, beta base. Uh, Magpie would be new for the DCAU, I think. Yes! Yes, Magpie was a, uh, Magpie was a new character. Okay, Keanu's gonna drop their, uh, their YouTube link. Um, that way I don't have to do it. Uh, if, if y'all wanna go give them a sub, that would be awesome. There's... Not a lot of y'all in the chat room right now, but, uh, you know, fuck it. Go do it. And, uh, I'm gonna... There, there it goes. They just dropped it. Go, uh, click that real quick, but stay on this window. Open that in a new tab. Hit subscribe. Alright, uh, let's just hop into the... Let's hop into the chapter. Harleen had thought Dr. Leland might actually faint when she dropped the swimming pool bomb on her. Dr. Leland must have pictured an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of bodies floating face down. Harleen had the same mental image herself. She hadn't been a bit serious about the idea. She simply hadn't been able to help herself. A swimming pool was such an outlandish suggestion, a perfect way to distract her from any misgivings or second thoughts she might have. If I remember correctly, uh, um... Yeah, so last chapter, last chapter, uh, Harley and Dr. Leland were having a conversation, and Harley suggested, uh, opening a swim, a swimming pool in Arkham. So that's what she's talking about there. Um, let's see, ba -ba -ba -ba. A swimming pool was such an outlandish suggestion, a perfect way to distract her from any misgivings or second thoughts she might have. But now that Harleen had given it a little more thought, a swimming pool didn't seem that far-fetched. Swimming was the ideal exercise for people who didn't move around much. It was low impact and high intensity, good for people of all ages and levels of fitness. Swimming laps would let patients blow off steam in a non-destructive way. Maybe they could even hire someone to give water aerobics classes. There was plenty of room for a pool on the sub, 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 sub basement level. Harleen wrote a note to herself to explore the possibilities further at some future time, then headed down to the Joker's cell. Normally, they'd have lunch together, except Dr. Leland had preempted the time with her, uh, with her need to be the boss. To make up for the lost time, uh, oh, yeah, there we are. To make up for the time lost, Harleen had given the Joker a sort of homework assignment. He was to come up with three to six activities he'd enjoyed early in his life, and think about what he had, or when he had stopped doing them, and why. Harleen had been very careful to avoid the word childhood, as the Joker shied away from discussions having anything to do with the word. But no therapy was complete unless it covered a person's childhood. Rather than acting like an interrogator and bullying him into talking about it, Harleen decided to try sneaking up on the subject in a roundabout way. She had to get him there soon. The longer the Joker put the discussion off, the harder it would be to, on him. So, so much of his life had been hard on him already. Enough was enough. Oh, why did it scroll back up? There we go.
There we are. Okay. The Joker looked as if he hadn't moved since she'd left. He was still sitting on the edge of his bed, elbows digging into his knees and his chin in his hands. The sheet of paper and felt tip pen sat apparently untouched beside him. She slipped the pen into her blazer pocket immediately. He was forbidden to have anything with a sharp point, but making him write with a crayon seemed so insulting that Harleen couldn't bring herself to do it. The Joker hadn't betrayed that little bit of trust. He hadn't stolen a pencil or pen to use as a weapon. In fact, he'd always reminded her to take all her writing instruments when she left. If Harleen were caught treating him with that much respect and dignity, she might lose her job. Fortunately, whoever had brought his lunch tray hadn't noticed this blatant violation. It was Taco Tuesday, Harleen remembered. The Joker loved Taco Tuesday. He'd eaten well, leaving the pudding cup for later. All the inmates loved pudding, the Joker included. I'm sorry I couldn't stay for lunch, Harleen said gently. But as I told you, the boss summoned me, and the boss must be obeyed. You know how that is. Or maybe he didn't, Harleen thought. The Joker was used to being in charge. If there, had, ugh, if there had been a time when he'd been a henchman or sidekick, she couldn't picture it, any more than she could picture what he had looked like before the incident that had given his, his distinctive appearance. Oh, sweet. Two of y'all went and subscribed to Kiana. Good on y'all. As she sat down in the chair... Uh, the Joker scooted back from the edge of the bed and put a pillow between his back and the wall. So, if you weren't able to come up with the things you enjoyed doing in the past, she went on as she picked up her notebook and took out her pen, perhaps you'd like to tell me what you did think about. I'm just trying to make sure that we're, okay. We got a little, little, bit, little bit of a ways to go before I gotta scroll. Uh, instead of giving her his usual equivocations, he said... You know, my father used to beat me up pretty bad. The words hit Harleen with a force that was almost physical. For a fraction of a second, the world seemed to tilt sideways. Harleen sat up straight in her chair. Her own emotional reaction had to wait for later. Right now, her patient needed her. He was staring past her at something only he could see. Go on, she said calmly. Every time I got out of line, the Joker took a swing at the air. Bam! Out of line. Bam! Harleen wrote, her hand shaking a little. Or, sometimes, I'd just be sitting there doing nothing and... The Joker took another swing. Pow! Nothing. Pow! Harleen wrote. Oh, the downsides of comedy part. Yeah, that's exactly where we are. Pops tended to favor the grape, you see, he continued. And people who tend to favor the grape don't tend to be upbeat. Grape people, not upbeat, Harling scribbled, nodding at him. I see. The Joker fell silent. Harleen waited, not wanting to interrupt his thoughts or break the spell that had put him in the mood to disclose. But as the silence stretched... She worried that he might suddenly scurry away from the subject and hide. Was there anything she could say to encourage him without being too overbearing? There was only one time I ever really saw Dad happy, he said finally. He took me to the circus when I was seven. Dad happy, circus, seven, Harleen wrote, keeping her gaze on the Joker so he would know uh, she was paying close attention. And there was this one clown, crazy looking geek with checkered pants. He laughed a little as he stared into the distance. Harleen could see him, uh, could see him seeing the crazy looking geek all over again as she wrote crazy looking checkered geek. He was running around the ring with his tiny dog snapping at his heels. Ring, dog, snapping, heels. Harleen scribbled, still looking at the Joker and not the paper. Abruptly, the Joker jumped to his feet. And every time the clown stopped to kick the pup, zwoop, he dropped his pants and fell on his butt. Zwoop, pants, butt, Harling scribbled, nodding. The Joker doubled over with laughter for a moment, 
then straightened up, wiping his, t his streaming eyes. Tears of laughter? Harling wrote. Jeez, I thought the old man would just bust a gut laughing. The Joker said a little breathless himself. I saw how happy he was, so I decided I'd make him laugh too. Old man, happy, laugh too. Harling underlined the words. So, the next night, when Dad staggered home from the bar, said the Joker, still laughing a little, there I stood at the front door, wearing his best Sunday slacks around my ankles. Harling tried to write, bar, staggered, door, slacks, ankles, but she was laughing too hard now. The Joker had dropped his own trousers, revealing boxer shorts, covered with a pattern of hearts, flowers, and cupids. She couldn't decide what was funnier, the boxer shorts or the way the Joker was acting out the story. His laughter was so contagious, she couldn't have stopped laughing if Dr. Leland had marched in, wanting to know what was so funny. Hi, Dad! I squeaked. Look at me! The Joker said in a high, squeaky kid's voice. Squeaked, Harleen wrote, laughing even harder. And swoop! said the Joker, making a swoopy motion with one hand. I took a big pratfall and tore the crotch right out of his pants! Harleen gave up trying to write anything and laughed along with her patient. Her stomach muscles were starting to ache now. How much longer would this go on, she wondered. She was also weeping with laughter, so much so that her whole face was wet. She was dabbing her cheeks with a tissue when the Joker suddenly stopped laughing and looked directly at her, his face cold and expressionless. And then he broke my nose, he said. Harleen's laughter cut off sharply, as if he had slapped her. No, she thought, trying to catch her breath. Please, no. I still like to think he was aiming for my behind and missed, the Joker added, his voice calm and matter-of-fact, as if he hadn't just been laughing his head off with her for minutes on end. He'd pulled up his pants, and he was back on the bed with the pillow, between himself and the wall. At least, that's what I told myself when I woke up in the hospital. Three days later. Three days later? Harling managed, her voice faint and horrified. But hey, that's the downside of comedy. The Joker jumped to his feet again and spread his hands, grinning broadly. You're always taking shots from folks who don't get the joke. Like my old man. His grin disappeared, replaced by an expression of pure loathing. Or, Batman. The way he said Batman made it sound like a profanity, Harling thought as he plumped down on the edge of the bed with his elbows on his knees. Wow, he said, shaking his head a little. That was, he thought for a few seconds, exhausting. I guess I've been holding that in for so long, I didn't realize it would be so draining to let it go. He turned to her with the expression of a man who had been struggling with something for years only to have it vanish, leaving him discombobulated and uncertain. I know it's time for our afternoon discussion, but suddenly I'm just so tired. Would it be okay if I took a nap? Let me scroll that for y'all. Of course, Harleen said. She was tempted to ask if she could stay with him in case he had a bad dream and then thought better of it. He was in a vulnerable state. She could give him a bad dream via the power of suggestion. Besides, he really needed to be alone for a while. She could go back to her office and write this up while it was still fresh in her mind. She needed some time to digest this herself. It wasn't just that he had opened up to her for the first time. He had told her something he had never told anyone else. She knew it because after reading his file over and over and over, she had never come across an account of a trip to the circus or any mention of his father being either abusive or an alcoholic. This wasn't just big. This was colossal. This was a game changer. And really quick, we got a we got a couple of notes here. Um, if the if the note spreadsheet will load, 
There we go. Oh, that's uh, that's that's for Batman Adventures Continue spreadsheet. I need the Mad Love one, which is a uh, just a page over. We don't have a lot going on. As I was saying last week, like once we get pretty much into the thick of a book, uh, uh, and we have a bunch of locations established. Uh, we'll typically like stay in those locations and with those characters um, for a while, and as a result, we don't really get a lot of uh, a lot of notes uh, to add on top of what we've already got. Um, I know we've got the mention of Joker's dad. Um, and we got that it's Taco Tuesday. Um, Joker was seven when he was abused and woke up in the hospital three days later. Uh, if similar to other versions of mad love these events are fabricated and that's really all so far for this chapter the dialogue seems to more follow the comic rather than the episode yeah yeah they uh i i, I feel like there there are points where they pull from both um but i mean they they add in a lot of stuff as well to diverge from either Harleen went back through his files anyway, just to make sure. Then she asked Dr. Leland, the boss, if she had ever gotten wind of any abuse in the Joker's background. Not even a hint, although it's likely it's a no-brainer, as the kids used to say. Dr. Leland had several file folders spread out on her desk. All of them seemed to be financial records. She made a pained face. Dr. Quinzel, Harleen, I'm sorry you've caught me at the worst possible time. Ordinarily, I'd drop everything to sit down with you and we could hash this out until we were both satisfied. There's a problem with Arkham's financials. I'm sorry, but it would take too long to explain. It's okay, boss. You don't have to, Harleen said. She had a vague memory of something in the news about a possible corruption scandal. A couple of the names mentioned were on the Arkham board. Had Dr. Leland been caught up in it? She couldn't imagine such a thing, but this was Arkham. Anything was possible. Is there something in particular you need? Dr. Leland asked her, sounding harried. Just information on the Joker's first 18 years, she said. We've already talked about that, Dr. Leland replied, sounding even more harried. Everything we've ever found connected to his childhood or adolescence has been falsified in some way, a forgery or whatever. We don't even know exactly how old he is. We only have estimates based on medical and dental examinations. Close enough for government work, but not much else. But we're doing government work, Harleen said. Dr. Leland was too busy looking for something among all the papers on her desk to comment. Abruptly, Harleen had another idea. What if it's something like witness protection? The other woman straightened up, looking at her with an incredulous expression. Now that's one I've never heard. Not the Good real... Job, oh, did we just get a new follower? Who's that? Hey, thanks, Dick, Dixney... Dixney Leguizer. I... That's a... Dixney... Man, I don't know. I don't know how, how you remember that, that string of letters to, um, to log in. Maybe a uh, maybe it's like a, a a name, but with some letters changed with X's. Daniel, there we go. Yep, so it is a name with with letters changed for X X's. Got it. That makes sense. Oh, and another new follower. Hello, Rodimus, twelve twenty ninety nine. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on board, both of y'all. Uh, now where where was I? 
Uh, what if it's something like witness protection? Yeah, we did that. Not the real witness protection program, Harleen added quickly, but something like that. Maybe there was something the Joker was so afraid of that it wasn't enough for him to assume a new identity. He had to completely obliterate his old one and become the Joker. There's only one problem with your theory. Anyone that scared would stay in hiding. The Joker has never hidden from anything or anyone. Because he knows whoever he's afraid of isn't interested in the Joker. They're after the person he used to be. It's possible, highly unlikely, but not impossible. Too improbable, Dr. Leland said. I doubt anything scares that man. I doubt anything could. Isn't that rather dehumanizing? Harleen said. Many sociopaths are thrill seekers because they don't feel fear. At least not in the sensible way that the rest of us do. Dr. Leland said. They're also talented liars. The Joker has lied so much, he may not even know the truth about himself anymore. It's a bit hard to keep track when you keep losing touch with reality. But don't you think after so many years, a lifetime really, even the most accomplished liar would want to tell the truth to... someone? Sure, said Dr. Leland. Just don't make the mistake of thinking that liar is the Joker and that someone is you. I'm sorry, I've really got my hands full, so if there's nothing else? Her expression said she hoped not. Harleen shook her head. Just that I don't think I'd want your job if they paid me a million dollars. Right now, I don't want it either, said Dr. Leland, looking unhappy. And if I can't prove they don't pay me even half that much, the Joker's pathology will be the least of my problems. Sounds like, uh, sounds like someone's been fudging the numbers on, uh, on what Dr. Leland's getting paid. Christmas not canon. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I want Christmas to be canon. But that's just me, though. All the staff psychiatrists had treated the Joker at one time or another, some more than once. It had been standard practice to rotate his doctors simply because he was so difficult and stressful. A chat with Dr. Davis confirmed that he had, in fact, removed some of his notes from the Joker's files. Can I see them? Harleen asked. No, Dr. Davis said flatly. They're gone. Destroyed. Harleen was shocked. Altering files? I didn't alter anything, Dr. Davis said, almost snapping. I unaltered them. The Joker fed me a pack of lies. I removed the lies and repaired the record to prevent problems in the future. You'd have done the same if it had been you. I'm not so sure about that, Harleen said, offended. Easy for you to say because it wasn't you, he said grumpily. This is Arkham Asylum. You don't know how different it is because you've never worked anywhere else. You have no basis for comparison. We have to do things differently here. Otherwise, the gargoyles would already have had us for lunch in hideous and terrible ways. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to meet with a patient, a former patient of yours, as it happens. Dr. Leland has decided the best way for you to do your job is to make more work for me. I guess that's why you have so much time to pore over old records and wonder what's missing. There goes a man with no sense of humor, Harleen thought, staring after him as he stumped away. And that's the end of chapter 17. Reject Christmas, embrace Kwanzaa. You know what? I, I feel like we can have both. Um, so we just got a Dr. Davis. I, I, I don't know if we've had Dr. Davis already. It looks like doing a quick control F of the spreadsheet that the answer is no, we haven't. Uh, so let me go ahead and add him into, uh, into the notes. And then we'll, uh, we'll move that little boy up. Now that you mention it, though, wasn't there, a, uh, like a Kwanzaa, uh, a, a Kwanzaa Rugrats, uh, special? I feel like uh, I, f I feel like you don't really get like a lot of uh, holiday specials outside of Christmas, but I think Rugrats tended to be really good at that. 
I think that's probably where I learned about Kwanzaa from, now that I'm thinking about it. All right, so we got chapter 18, which is a pretty short chapter, and then we'll uh, then we'll hop over, we'll do the little funny haha thing uh, uh, that I was talking about earlier, and uh, and we'll read a we'll read a magazine real quick. Let me uh, let me move these down a little bit just in case there's a there's more notes in 18 than anticipated, but I doubt it. Go into chapter 18. I only learned about it very recently, though, through uh, Laron Reedus's video on the Rugrats holiday season special. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a he, he's a really good uh, YouTuber as well. I, I should hit him up to to hop onto something with us uh, one day. I, I don't I don't watch him all the time, uh, but I, I came across him because of uh, at home Comic Con, and I've caught a couple of his videos, and they're uh, they're usually pretty good. As the weeks passed, Harleen became convinced the man, uh, the man the world called a homicidal madman was in fact a tortured soul crying out for the same thing everyone else wanted. Love and acceptance. She was aware of how melodramatic that sounded, but people were melodramatic. People were messy, desperate, full of urgent emotions, like in the half-remembered poem from one of her college lit classes. They fell upon the thorns of life. They bled. In the next moment, they were jumping for joy. And the moment after that, they would die for love. That was the human condition. Leaving that aside, she decided the Joker was not a homicidal maniac. She knew a homicidal maniac when she saw one. She had come face to face with three of them in the middle of the night on Coney Island when she was seven years old and barely escaped with her life. When it came to homicidal maniacs, Harleen Quinzel was an authority. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Half remembered poem from one of her college lit classes. Okay, what is what is that poem? Because that's something that I'm going to have to take notes on. Good old Bing. At Home Comic Con was fun to watch. Oh, for sure. I, uh, I didn't watch the full thing, but there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of fun ones in there. Okay, so Saul Bellow. Saul Bello Herzog, but what is the what is the poem? Oh, it's from Herzog by Saul Bello. Got it. So I can uh, throw that into the uh, into the mix. Uh, where's where is the pop culture one? all the way over here. Herzog by Saul I'm hoping that uh, that we could do another at home comic con sometime in the future though I'm hoping that if it does happen that it's not a result of a uh, of a what you call it of a um, you know pandemic still being around but who's to say because it looks like our government just does not want to take it seriously enough Harleen had trouble organizing her jottings not because she couldn't remember what they meant just looking at them she could remember what the Joker had said word for word it was that it was becoming more difficult to write them up as reports for Dr. Leland, to strip out the raw thoughts and emotions that gave them meaning and make them into something cold and antiseptic. 
The subject admits to suffering childhood abuse, alcoholic father, father-son trip to circus, potential bonding experience, subject beaten when prank went wrong, three days in hospital, father, Batman. Harleen didn't like referring to the Joker as the subject. She didn't like calling any of her patients the subject, even though it was standard terminology. It was supposed to help you maintain professional objectivity and avoid becoming personally involved with a patient, but Harleen thought it dehumanized the patients, objectifying them so they became their symptoms and case histories instead of human beings, something the Hippocratic Oath explicitly warned against. Maintaining professional distance made sense. Doctors couldn't make every patient personally important, or it would tear them apart. Still. Every patient deserved to be treated like a person, and not written off just because they were diagnosed as incurable or dangerous. For one thing, a person wasn't a diagnosis, and for another, what if the diagnosis were wrong? Diagnostic errors happened in every area of medicine. Tests gave false positives or negatives, people read x-rays or scans wrong, or got them mixed up, and even the best doctors weren't infallible, especially in psychiatry. A well-intentioned doctor could interpret symptomatic behavior in a particular way because of an unconscious bias, and no one would think to challenge it because of the doctor's reputation or position. And once in a while, someone like Hugo Strange came along and did all kinds of damage before anyone could stop him. In light of these things, Harleen wasn't surprised the Joker had been di misdiagnosed. She had discovered the mistake only because her own unique life experiences had given her a special understanding most doctors didn't have. She could see that labels like homicidal and maniac had been too easily applied to someone who was really just a lost injured child trying to make the world laugh so it would love him. Or at least not hit him so hard that he was unconscious for three days. It would be cool to have another one. It's cool seeing comic channels come together. Yeah, uh, that 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 was a really fun thing uh, out of it, uh, for sure. We ended up meeting uh, a lot of folks uh, through that. So big ups to uh, big ups to Drake for having made that possible. Let me scroll. I'm skipping a paragraph, but that's okay. I'm gonna read it. Uh, I just didn't want to have the scroll on two different pages. Harleen understood that. She'd done the same thing on the worst night of her life. The Joker was a more extreme case. The very people who were supposed to take care of him and protect him had terrorized him so much in his childhood, he must have devised his own version of witness protection, disguising his true identity without having to hide from the world. Why not? The justice system had failed to protect him, so he'd had to protect himself, and the system was still failing him. Instead of understanding him as the abused, terrified child he had been, it locked him up for being a victim. But he hadn't let abuse and fear turn him into a tearful, quivering wreck. He had stood up to the world and fought back by making fun of it, and the system didn't like that at all. They called that having a bad attitude. He'd refused to give up his self-worth, so the system had called in a specialist to teach him the error of his ways. Uh, viz. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't understand the context of viz being there. Uh, maybe. Maybe it's a, a literary thing that I. Uh, I don't understand because I don't read too many books. That state-approved terrorist and self-righteous bully, Batman. After that, the Joker hadn't stood a chance. Once you got on Batman's radar, there was apparently no way to get off of it. You became his twisted idea of a hobby or project. He never stopped making you miserable. Harleen pulled the file folders from her previous, less successful project with the female patients and reread her notes. Batman had loomed large in their anger. All the women had stories about being frightened, trapped, and overpowered, as he'd taken them into custody. He'd never asked for their side of the story, never stopped to think that they might have been victims and not criminals. Sometimes, Harleen wondered if Batman had ever been with the Brooklyn Police Department. He would have fit right in. 
And that's where we're ending uh, chapter 18 today. Um, really quick, I guess we got a, a mention of the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, I don't I don't feel like that's technically pop culture, uh, but that's kind of the, uh, the, the best fit um, for writing that down. And we got a, we got another mention of that Hugo Strange thing, which makes me wonder if he's gonna be a big deal um, later on. Uh, once in a while, someone like Hugo Strange came along and did all kinds of damage before anyone could stop him. Uh, once in a while. I bet Ted would know what they're alluding to. Before anyone could stop him. And that's on page 155. They, they, uh, for those of you who weren't here last time, um, there was a, there, 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 there was a mention of Hugo Strange, um, in what, chapter 16? Harley Quinn's arrival was the most exciting thing to happen to Arkham since Hugo Strange's downfall. So I'm not sure what they're, uh, what they're doing. Uh, Greg is asking about James. Yeah, James, uh, James is a bit under the weather. Um, so he wasn't able to do, uh, you know, the stream this week. Uh, and he's also, uh, you know, having a, a difficult time getting, uh, getting content, uh, out for Sunday. Uh, we will have something. Uh, I, it, it might just be a, a video of James kind of explaining the situation. Um, but uh, that brings us to the, the couple of little, little fun things that, that we had planned for today. Not, not that reading the book's not fun, uh, but we, uh, as I said earlier, uh, because, of, um, because of the situation, we were thinking about trying to figure out a small video to do for Sunday that like wouldn't need much editing at all. And I came up with a really funny idea. Uh, does this book market itself as being canon to the DCAU? Uh, so it's not marketed necessarily that way. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. It's it's kind of just that it is an adaptation of you know DCAU lore, and so we wanted to see like if the uh, if the expanded content uh, could fit, and if not, why not? Kind of a situation. Um, I think there is mention in the marketing somewhere of like the comic or maybe the. Uh, maybe the, the the TV episode but like nothing that specifically says DCAU on it but yeah okay uh, so really quick I have to log into Ted's DC Universe account uh, because I don't have my own anymore and that means the music's got to go away too um, What is it? Just dot com, I think. But so so for those of the, for those of you who are already aware, uh, we got we got you know the the little meme going on on the channel, the Where's Nightwing thing, and um, I thought I thought that it would be kind of funny if since uh since we we've got a Where's Nightwing and we have uh you know the Hidden Heroes video and more recently the Hidden Villains video uh that doing doing a hidden nightwings video would be kind of funny um and, and and there's that there's that one spot in the jlu episode i gotta figure out which jlu episode it was i think it was grudge grudge match maybe it was one of the ones with uh with like roulette or whatever her name is uh, where Nightwing's kind of just sitting on the grudge match. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so let me log into Ted's account real fast. And then we're going to pull up that moment from grudge match. And, I, and it's just going to be me being like, oh, there, there, there he is. 
and uh, we might do like a little intro for it uh, and film that separately at gmail.com. Let me log in there. Oh, I accidentally exited Twitch on my phone. Uh, so I can't see the chat. Let me get that back up. And then after that, um, then after we do that, I'll, I'll read uh, an article uh, from the Wizard JLA special uh, that I just got. Uh, yeah, let's save that password just so I don't have to type it all in next time. Uh, and we're talking about potentially using that for content as well, you know, clipping out, uh, mag reading magazine articles and stuff. Uh, especially when it's stuff that, like, wasn't, uh, that didn't end up coming to fruition. Let me type in the grudge match. But how, how are y'all doing? It says there are 11 of y'all, and y'all aren't really talking much. There's as many of y'all as there are missed messages from James and Ted. I bet it's James going through the new uh, the new Batman Adventures Continues. Uh, I wonder if WB slash DC were okayed Nightwing's appearance given the Bat embargo, or if the producers slash artists just sneaked him. I, got, I gotta imagine it was a, a, a sneaky thing. Somewhere down the line, I'm going to write up a video essay called Why the Joker is a Symbol of Objectivism and scream about this damn book for like 20 minutes straight. <laughs> uh, 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 scream about it in a good way or a bad way? Are you enjoying the book or are you... Uh... Uh, for me, like, I enjoy, I'm enjoying like how they are uh, um, kind of giving more depth uh, to, you know the 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 pre Joker Harley Quinn, but I just I just hate that with all that extra depth added that you know it's it's oh, that's so loud that's so loud uh, I I hate that with all that extra depth added that that we're still going to the 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 same conclusion the whole I'm Harley and now I work for the Joker because I am gullible kind of situation. Right, where was okay here it is all right okay so we gotta we gotta we gotta get in character for this y'all y'all gotta act like you don't even know that this is coming uh, is Justice League unlimited? Uh, moving to HBO Max after DCU? Probably. I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay. Alright, y'all see we're, we're in Bloodhaven. You know what that means. Oh, Gargoyle. Gar there he is! There's Nightwing! There's Nightwing! Y'all see it? There's Nightwing! Found him! And that's all of the hidden Nightwings in the DCAU. Thanks for watching the Watchtower Database. I don't know. That's it. It's 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 a silly goof. It's a gaff. Uh, I'll just have to tell James that that happened at around twelve fifty six. But uh, we might we might do it. We might end up doing it a little differently. We had a, a couple different uh, um, couple different ways that we were talking about doing that. Um, and that was just one of them. So if he doesn't like that take, then we'll do it differently somehow. Um, maybe with me just being audio only or something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let me get in our Google Drive really quick and pull up that magazine article. Because uh, I scanned that in and I put it on our, uh, on our cloud drive. I also put it on our Twitter uh, and our Instagram. But... Uh, compression kind of made it a little weird. Mm -mm -mm. 
No, I don't want the 4J. I want the magazines. It might take a minute because uh, there's so much in this drive. Maybe if I close the DC Universe tab. Nightwing, cheeks and all. Absolutely. Uh, it's always strange seeing Arkham treated as a hospital as opposed to a prison. I mean, personally, like it, it, it. I feel like it should be treated as a hospital. Uh, but they very much have kind of gone the route of it just being a prison for, um, you know, for the people that they deem hopeless. I'm enjoying it a ton, but it's really made me realize how the Joker's whole thing lines up a lot with objectivist ideas of black and white morality. Gotcha. Okay. So that's why Nightwing is gone. Yeah, he's hanging out in Bloodhaven. Harley's whole existence is a takedown of more progressive ideas for treating inmates. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, like I, I enjoy that they're doing, you know, more progressive stuff with the character, but when we already know like you know, the conclusion, like it does kinda undercut all those ideas and it's a it's a bit of a bummer. Let me get into that wizard magazine file. Maybe I should have just gone to recent files or whatever, but that's okay. I'll give it its time to load. I don't want notifications. I just want to go to the place I clicked. Why is it not? What if I just hit enter instead of clicking it? Okay. Well, what if I just type in wizard? Yep, there it is. JLA special. You know, if that doesn't work, I've actually got the, uh, I've got the scans on my computer. I would just need to do a new window capture. Uh, but that might be the way to go. Cause I, I don't know. I don't know why it's not letting me click the wizard, uh, the wizard file. Uh, Miss the timeline videos. Well, Greg, you are in luck. Um, this Saturday, we're doing we're doing timeline streaming. Um, we're 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 going through videos that I've already uh, uh, that we've already done, and starting to make a a a visual you know read through timeline. Uh, yeah, okay, it looks like that, that, that this doesn't want to open. So let me see if I can get it open a different way. But yeah, those are, that, that's going to be, uh, this Saturday at, um, it's going to be 6 p.m. my time, uh, rather than a noon thing. Just, uh, more or less so that, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not confined to uh, um, a specific amount of time uh, and I can you know keep going as long as I feel like it because uh, usually when we do these in the day either I haven't had lunch yet or there's you know other stuff going on I gotta you know uh, go go see what's up with the fiance and everything uh, that kind of stuff so it'll be it'll be a nighttime stream um, and those will be, it'll be back and forth, uh, about, uh, you know, what exactly we're doing every week. Uh, it's going to be more of a relaxed kind of, uh, a go with the flow situation. So sometimes it'll be the timeline stuff. Other times it'll just be like this magazine reading, uh, kind of stuff and going through and, and, and trying to, uh, uh, like weed out stuff that I don't need from our uh, from our Google Drive. Uh, let me see. Where is... Start menu, search pane, charm bar. How about just opening the Windows Photo Viewer? Why won't it? 
I wonder if I can get around it just by hitting the recent button. Or you know what? Let me refresh that page. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to get the window capture for. It might not it might not let me capture the the Windows Photo Viewer because I opened it after starting the stream. But you would think that they would have a way to handle that. Uh, let me see. Maybe if I add it from a new window. Add source. Oh nope, that's 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 not what we wanted. Let me drop that down. That's still in the way. Uh, my face is covered right now, ain't it? And it's probably not even gonna let me open the window that I want to open. Nope, it won't let me do it. Okay, well that was worth a shot. But let me get rid of that window capture now. Uh, um, remove. Are you sure you want to remove? Yes. Yes. All right. Let's see. Now that uh, ah. Oh. Okay. It's taking its time, but it looks like it's starting to open it now. So that's good. Has a uh, stream been running smoothly today? I haven't seen any of y'all uh, um, mention any any kind of buffer problems or anything. So I don't I don't know why why this is going slow if uh, if the stream's running smoothly, but uh, it, it just seems to be the case. There we go, we're in the Wizard Magazine folder. Running well today, that is good to hear. We, we've been wanting to do those, uh, those timeline streams for a while now, or specifically I've been wanting to do them, uh, but it's been off the, off the plate uh, because of the fact that uh, uh, you know my internet messes up sometimes or my computer or whatever. So we've been uh, troubleshooting, and that's part of uh, part of why the uh, the stream is running smoother now. Okay, here we go. Uh, the comic book store I work at has crappy Wi-Fi, so I'm not an accurate judge. Damn, that do be the way sometimes. All right, uh, let me let me. If we're going to be clipping this for content, I guess I need to uh, to do a bit of an intro first. Uh, let me make sure that I can get it zoomed uh, oh, to maybe, well, there we go. Let's get it about right there. There we go. All right. Or could I open with? Eh, it'll be fine. All right, let me uh, let me do do a quick intro because uh, this is gonna be on YouTube as well, probably. Uh, hello, Watchtower Database. Uh, this is something a little different we're trying out. Um, for those of you who don't know, we have a Twitch channel over at Twitch.tv/dcau Watchtower, where um, every every week James, Ted, and I all do uh, streams. Uh, James usually takes Tuesdays uh, and reads. Um, DCAU tie-in comics. Ted usually takes Wednesdays and plays DCAU tie-in games. And I usually take Thursdays and read DCAU uh, tie-in books. Um, and we kind of take notes on them and, you know, do do uh, do note-taking for, for Will It Cannon videos, timeline videos, all that kind of fun stuff. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, uh, be sure to follow us over at twitch.tv slash DCAU Watchtower. Uh, but this is something new that we're doing uh, on the Twitch as well. Um, we figured that maybe it would be fun to read DCAU-related magazine articles, clip those out, and, and bring them over here to YouTube 
uh, for you guys to to you know see and witness and have fun with. Um, so this will this will be the first one, and based on the reaction to this, we might be doing more. Um, I know we're talking about doing Saturdays on the Twitch channel, having more uh, loose form content than the three things that I've already mentioned, and you know doing doing some timeline stuff, doing magazine readings, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you want to see that stuff before it hits over here on the YouTube, once again, be follow, be sure to follow us over there, twitch.tv slash DCAU Watchtower. Uh, but yeah, let, let's go ahead and, and read this uh, this article from, this is from the, the 1998 um, Wizard Magazine JLA special uh, that I just bought. Uh, and it, it's talking about how the Justice League of America almost made their way into Superman the Animated Series. So let's go ahead, let, let's, let's see what's going on. Uh, tuned out? They're the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But the one beachhead the Justice League wants to conquer, animation, may be off limits. Fans want it to happen. Creators want it to happen. There was a time when it almost did happen. Rumors run rampant, claiming that it'll be happening soon. But let's be clear here, folks. There is no JLA cartoon currently in the works. Of course, this was 1998, and we ended up getting one in, what, 2001? Which is not to say it'll never happen, of course. I'm not ruling it out. And, in fact, we've come up with some interesting ideas we may explore, says Paul Dini, producer of the Batman and Superman animated series for Warner Bros. Animation. It'd be great if we could do all those characters and do them in animation the way everyone wants to see them. It's just that DC is concentrating on the big guns, Superman and Batman. Which is not to say they're unaware of the JLA and they're intrigued. It's just a matter of can we do it and is there interest in it? Can the idea sustain itself? I don't rule anything out. Demanding justice. Given the overwhelming popularity of the Superman and Batman animated series, fans have been left wondering why a JLA cartoon has been so long in coming. If there's, if there are no current plans to bring the Justice League to Saturday morning television, then why the hell not? Truthfully, it's a difficult show to do, says Superman producer Bruce Timm. It's got all those characters, and it's hard to keep two heroes busy in an action scene at the same time. We do that all the time on the Batman show. When we have Batman, Batgirl, and Robin in a scene together, fighting a group of criminals, you get lost. If you follow Batman too long, you wonder what's happening to Robin. It's a logistics thing. It's very difficult. Ah, but what about a slight reworking of the JLA concept, similar to the format of The Adventures in the DC Universe comic book? Solo stories built around individual team members. That way, the logistical difficulties of multi-hero stories wouldn't be a problem. That's a possibility, says Tim. We've discussed that as well. The problem is, all the superheroes don't live in the same part of town, and they don't all have the same hangout. With Batman, you've got the Batcave, you've got Wayne Manor, you've got the police station. There are certain stock locations you don't have to redesign for every episode. But, if you had Green Lantern in one episode, Black Canary in the next, you'd basically be having to redesign the entire world for every single episode. There's just not enough time to do it right on the schedule we'd have to... Yeah. Sorry. There's just not enough time to do it right on the schedule we'd have to... Oh my god, I, it says have to have, and I keep tripping over that. There's just not enough time to do it right on the schedule we'd have to have to get in it... Ugh. I did it again! I did... You guys, I'm doing it again. I hope this is on YouTube. Hopefully it will be. Let's try this one more time. There's just not enough time to do it right on the schedule we'd have to have to get it on the air. I'm not saying it'd be out of the realm of possibilities, but it would be difficult. Despite the variety of reasons not to do it, however, the folks at Warner Bros. Animation do seem eager for an animated JLA series. They'd just prefer to see the show done right, rather than done too 
quickly. I'd like to see it done, because I think nobody could do it better than the team here at Warner Bros, says Deanie. It would be a great show to work on, a wonderful challenge coming up with the right kind of story, the right scenario that works as far as character dynamic as well as visuals. When people keep talking about the JLA, however, I think be careful what you wish for because you don't want the return of the Super Friends. That was a pretty damn lame-ass show. Naturally, if we had our shot to do it, we'd do it differently. Teammates, in an unproduced proposal, uh, super couples Green Arrow and Black Canary and Hawkman and Hawkgirl would have made the JLA, oh my god, it's uh, the JLA roster. There we go. It was covered up by, uh, by the, the little zoom in, zoom out. Close Encounter. Amazingly enough, at one time, there were plans to produce a JLA animated series long before the Warner Bros. team discovered its inherent logical problems. When we were developing the Superman show, we were playing around with different ideas, says Tim. So at one point, all we said, or at, so at one point we said, well, what if we did Superman? And then this next page is just going to be Boom, these guys. The JLA, clockwise from top left, Flash, Superman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and Orion had been primed and ready for uh, for Cartoon Land. Will they ever get the green light? So Tim was saying, what if we do Superman and the Justice League, where every episode would have Superman in it, plus two other members of the Justice League? The creators ran with the idea only for a week, but in that time, Tim and crew explored a number of characters that could appear. I sat down and did designs for a bunch of the different characters, uh, for a bunch of different characters, even some that had never even been in the JLA, like the question. We tried to put in, er, we tried to put in as weird a mix of characters as we could. Hold on, I actually need to, to zoom this back in. There we go, that's easier to read. We tried to put in as weird a mix of characters as we could. So it wasn't just Superman, Aquaman, Hawkman. So that's how that came about. But it never went further than that. Had the Warner Bros. team proceeded, here's the JLA lineup fans would currently be enjoying on Saturday mornings. Superman, The Question, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, Aquaman, Green Arrow, Black Canary, Vixen, Nightshade, Black Lightning, the Jon Stewart Green Lantern, and Dr. Fate. Batman wasn't going to be part of it, says Tim. He already had his own show. So out of all of, out of, all of the people mentioned, the only ones we never ended up getting in the DCAU uh, was Black Lightning and Nightshade. We got all of them eventually at some point. Some of them in, uh, you know, the style that we see here. The Question, and Dr. Fate, uh, Scott Free, uh, Light Ray. Really didn't have uh, much change up to the to their designs by the time they, they got on air. Uh, Vixen absolutely did. That's that's a very 90s design. And Supergirl had, a, had an update as well. Um, as, as well as some of the others on the previous pages. Um, so why didn't it happen? Actually, DC president and editor-in-chief Jeanette Kahn put a stop to it, says Tim. She thought it was not a good idea since we were just reintroducing Superman to the audience. And she, th she thought teaming him up with the JLA would be diminishing to him. We all kind of agreed with that, so we dropped the JLA idea. Despite the idea getting scrapped, the Warner Bros. team managed to put their initial design work to good use when a number of JLA members started popping up in the animated realm, beginning with Zatanna's appearance on Batman. We wanted to make sure any superhero guest stars would make sense within the context of the Batman show, says Tim. So we played Zatanna's powers down and made her more of a David Copperfield type of magician so that she had a bit more realistic framework for her appearance. 
Actually, according to Superman producer Alan Burnett, there's another, far more personal reason Zatanna was the first JLA member to appear. Paul Dini wanted to use Zatanna because he was secretly in love with her, says Burnett. It's something we try not to talk about too much. Which is, is hilarious to me, uh, um, that this man saying, we try not to talk about it. But I'm going to put this man on blast in, in the largest comic book publication of the 90s. Uh, that Supergirl looks pretty different. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, face looks more b I could, I could, I could see that. Um, from what I understand, the way that they're talking about these, um, I don't know if you all have seen the, the more Fleischer, uh, styled, uh, Superman the Animated Series, uh, um, design work. Uh, but that was a thing that they were going to do was have them look more like their forties counterparts, uh, which probably would have worked pretty well given that, uh, Batman, the animated series was kind of a, a mix of the forties and the nineties and all that kind of stuff. And so it probably would have felt more, uh, in, in that realm uh, of the DCAU rather than, you know, having everything streamlined. Uh, but from what I've read before, uh, eventually, uh, Bruce Tim came across the cartoon Mighty Hercules, and that's what they ended up making their Superman look like. Uh, the Superman that we saw on the page before, this Superman, looks kind of like a halfway point uh, between the two. So that, to me, as well as what they're saying here about how uh, this was, you know, when they were trying to, uh, um, to reintroduce uh, Superman to the audience... Uh, when they, they came up with this idea. Uh, makes makes me think that this was between the Fleischer stuff and uh, and the final product. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. The next JLA team-up came in the Superman episode, The Hand of Fate. I believe we were just tossing ideas around about which heroes we wanted to use, says Tim, and we thought Dr. Fate would look great in the cartoon. We thought it would be a great episode to go all out on. With Lovecraftian monsters and such, and we loved the way it turned out. Most recently, Superman viewers finally got the chance to see one of the current JLA members in Speed Demon. I've always wanted to do The Flash, admits Burnett, so we decided to incorporate him into Superman. We didn't identify which Flash he was, although I think he's probably the Wally West Flash. He was identified as coming from Central City, so some fans said he must be Barry Allen. But, you know, Wally goes back quite a few years, so it's very natural for him to have been coming from Central City himself. Coming soon. Fan response to each guest appearance was rousing enough to convince the producers to consider other JLA members, so viewers will get their wish when Green Lantern and Aquaman make their animated debuts during the upcoming season of Superman. I changed the Green Lantern design I'd done for the original JLA presentation because originally I was going to use Jon Stewart, says... I'm going to guess Bruce Timm, because uh, he's the one doing the designs. Yep, says Tim. There we go. The upcoming episode, in brightest day, will debut Kyle Rayner as the Lantern to keep current with the comics. It's basically how Jordan's origin story, but it happens to Kyle. The costume is a little bit of both, although perhaps a bit more like how Jordan Green Lantern. It's kind of a coincidence, but Kyle Rayner works for the art department of the Daily Planet, so it's more convenient that Superman would be along for the origin. As to which Aquaman will be showing up, the current hook-handed version of the old one, uh, or the old one, I should say, uh, as to which Aquaman will be showing up, the current hook-handed version or the old one, Warner Bros. plays it both ways. It's the old Aquaman costume, but he's got the new Aquaman attitude, says Tim. I don't want to say he's Namor-like, but he's definitely not quite the old benign Aquaman. He's got the attitude, but he doesn't have the beard and the hook. He's more like the classic Aquaman. The good news for JLA fans is by individually introducing each character, the Warner Bros. team may be moving a JLA series closer to fruition. 
We were toying with the idea of introducing all the characters uh, that would be in the JLA one by one in Superman. Then the last episode ever would be the formation of the JLA, says Burnett, who is quick to point out it's a decision that's still up in the air. We don't know if we're going to have another season on Superman at this point, but if we do, I'm sure we're going to be introducing them. Remember, however, that just because the Warner Bros. team is considering how best to create an animated JLA series, that doesn't mean, uh, I'm sorry, that doesn't make it a done deal, despite whatever rumors are currently making the rounds on the internet. There's been the craziest stuff out there. People saying they've actually seen it, laughs Tim. I swear to God, there's some kook out there saying, Yeah, I was at the special sneak screening in Los Angeles of the JLA cartoon. He described the whole thing and I kept thinking, Oh my God, what planet is this guy from? But rumors aside, and despite the fact that the TV rights are tied up with the recent unaired pilot, see sidebar right, uh, the question of the JLA's animation future still remains open, if uncertain for now. The powers that be make the final decision, says Burnett. It has nothing to do with the quality of the product, just with the mix of programming that the network wants. So this is, to, uh, so this is just to say that JLA is still on the back burner. Someday, if we continue having success with Superman, Batman, and all the other superhero shows, someday JLA will be done, but just not right now. So, there we go. That's, uh, the JLA was going to be used for Superman. Uh, they designed the, they designed the, 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 the folks, um, you know, before the show. And uh, Alan Burnett was talking about, you know, around the time that uh, Fish Story was coming around, which was the final season. I think that might have been the final episode, actually. I know, I know, what is it? Legacy is, like, seen as the finale. But from what I understand, um, Fish Story was the final produced episode, if I remember correctly. So it seems like they were talking about if there was going to be another season that uh, they would have recycled that that JLA idea that they had from the get-go. Um, but yeah, for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to let us know if you would like to keep seeing uh, these, uh, these clips from Twitch um, where we read the magazines and stuff. Uh, and just a reminder, we are streaming over there every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at noon uh, Pacific time. Uh, and we're going to be starting to do Saturdays at noon, uh, not noon, at 6 Pacific time uh, as a more more loosely scheduled uh, situation. Uh, come hang out with us over there. I know that, uh, that if you're watching this, you enjoy our content. Um, and there's, there's, there's a lot more content over there as well. You know, uh, at least three or four hours of it every week, um, you know, given that our schedule holds steady um so yeah once again be sure to like comment subscribe and head over to twitch if you want to see this stuff happen live before it comes up uh, uh in the youtube clippings uh but yeah love y'all and you take care and that should be good for the youtube and now let me see what you guys have going on really quick in the chat because uh, I don't have anything else planned and we're already running about 30 minutes over. Uh, so I'm gonna gonna end up heading out of here after I, I catch up with the chat. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's a shame that Black Lightning and Nightshade never made it into the series, even if I get why it never happened in Black Lightning's case. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I, I don't know specifically why it never happened for Nightshade. Uh, but from what I understand, there was a rights issue with Black Lightning for a while, um, right? Because that's part of why they like recreated Black Vulcan or, or whatever the character's name was for Super Friends, um, who was basically Black Lightning, but with a different name. Uh, and I don't remember if this was something that was confirmed somewhere or if I just read it somewhere and it's actually apocryphal, but from what I understand, 
um, the 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 Soul Power episode of Static Shock was supposed to have Black Lightning in it instead of Soul Power and Sparky, uh, and that was supposed to be the team up. And they ended up getting told, uh, "No, that you can't do that. We're not sure about the rights." Even all those years later, um, so it's kind of wild how long that stuff gets tied up. Uh, I've seen that Superman. I have the DVD. Uh, personally, I prefer having Static in the DCAU as opposed to Black Lightning, but it's cool to see what he would have looked like. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would have loved to have both, right? Like, I love Static. I love Static. But having Black Light, like, there, there's, there's, there's no, there's no, it doesn't need to be a trade. Um, you know, they can both exist simultaneously. There's ways to do characters, or stories, uh, with both characters, despite similarities, right? Uh, um, you know, they're like a, a, a young black teenager with lightning powers. Uh, having uh, a mentor to look up to would have been a really uh, a really cool cool thing. Um, which, not to say that he would need a mentor to look up to, but it, it, you can explore uh, similar stories in a different light when one character is a teenager and the other character is you know in his 20s and his 30s and has had more life experience to him um let's see ba -ba -ba -ba. bruce tim is the best person to handle dc I, th I think he's definitely up there for sure uh i i understand some people have their misgivings with him he does uh have a tendency to to over sexualize female characters um but nine times out of ten i feel like a lot of that um is just his personal work rather than anything official i know sometimes stuff like that does slip into the official uh work and, and it, it can range from okay to very cringy um but mo more 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 than anything I, I think he would be a fine person to to handle more DC stuff. Um, I wish Dwayne McDuffie were still with us, because uh, that man knows how to write a story. Um, let's see. Sort of like what they did on Young Justice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Bruce Tim is the best person to handle. Uh, was Beyond on yet at this point? I think Beyond um, didn't start until 1999. Right, so they were at the tail end of, of making Superman here, and they weren't sure if they were going to get another season. So Beyond probably wasn't picked up quite yet. Um, and if it was, it, it definitely wasn't on the air. Uh, they don't need to be connected. A team-up, like the one that was planned for the Static Shock series, would have been great, but I like Virgil being his own person, and I definitely wouldn't want Jeff to hijack Virgil's show. Yeah, I mean, they, would, they wouldn't need to team up necessarily. Um, but, you know, seeing a team up would have been, uh, would have been nice. Do I watch the YouTube channel Nerdwire? It sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't say that it's something I, I watch uh, often because, uh, you know, it only sounds vaguely familiar. So I've probably seen a video or two, but I haven't uh, subscribed at the very least. Uh, Tony Isabella is notoriously overprotective of Black Lightning and hates almost everything that's been done with him since his original run ended. Ah, oh, well, that ex that explains that. Uh, they dropped a video of Wonder Woman's complete animated history. Oh, that's funny because uh, that's that's something that uh, that that we're also working on. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe maybe the way that we're covering it is going to be different than uh than theirs though so we'll see uh but with that said you know we've got we got a little bit more than you bargained for today we we we, we read a magazine article we did a little little silly where's nightwing situation and we did the two chapters that you came here for um but my Lacroix is running low and uh and my uh, my fiance is in the other room waiting for me to come play uh video games with her so I'm going to uh, go ahead and get out of here for today. Uh, hopefully, I will be seeing you all on Saturday. Um, you know, for the uh, for the timeline stream. 
Uh, I'm hoping that uh, things continue to run smoothly. Uh, that way we have no issues there. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll take it in stride if, uh, if anything goofs up. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get like a lot of, uh, whatever visuals that I'll need to, to plug in, uh, prepped beforehand. Uh, that way I'm not wasting y'all's time grabbing, uh, you know, title cards and stuff. But, uh, yeah, Saturday, six o'clock, uh, Pacific time. Uh, I will see y'all then. Uh, but until then you all take care and, uh, thanks for hanging out today. I love y'all. Bye.